James Kaufman, World News Report today, October 9th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. You'll need to watch this entire video because everything's going on. We're in a geomagnetic storm, or were a few hours ago. We're in a solar storm currently. We have a polar cap absorption event going on. We've just had a second X flare within the last 24 hours, and things are blowing up. So as you can see here, it says from 10 to 1 last night, central time here in the U.S., we had a geomagnetic storm, a KP 4.67. Now we'll try to determine where that came from now as we look into the X flare that just popped off. All right, over to GOES X-ray flux, starting out with that G1 geomagnetic storm we just saw from 10 to 1 last night, central time here in the U.S., the KP 4.67. We see absolutely nothing that could have caused that unless it came in very quickly and was caused by this X2 and X1 flare here that had very little signature when they popped off. That storm would have had to get here, well, very quickly, in just over 24 hours. Now, we've also had two X flares today, an X1.84, and actually they haven't named this yet, but we'll try to get a reading on it. An X1.4 sounds awful high for where it is, but that's what the reading says here. Uh, we will see if the info has been updated. Now, the first X 1.84, well, that came from Sunspot region, AR 3848. We've been watching that sunspot, and it's been very active since it's come around the limb. This X flare here, the X 1.4 flare, actually originated from one of the sunspots that's going around the far limb. It looks like X3844, our old friend. So two days ago, we had the X2.19 that I showed, followed by quickly the X1 flare that could have caused the G1 4.67 KP index geomagnetic storm although it would have had to arrive very quickly, especially based on how long the other larger X flares, the X 9.15 and X 7.6, took to arrive, which was four days plus plus. Today we had a 40% chance of an X flare, a 75% chance of an M flare, and we've been over a C baseline for months now, so that should be 100%. I guess they're all 100% because we've had them all. Two X flares today. Again, the X 1.84, directly Earth facing, came from a Delta sunspot and it peaked at 156 UTC time, which would be about 856 last night central time here in the US. The other flare looks like it came from 38. 42 or 3844. You'll see how close they are and how hard it is to determine. Again, an X 1.4 solar flare with all appearances. Over to HMI Intensigram. The first X flare we had today came from AR 3848, directly Earth facing. Looks like it caused a proton storm and it looks like it caused a polar cap absorption event that should have been well magnified by this last solar flare that we just had the x1.4 which came from either 3844 or 3842 very hard to determine since they're so close together i will show you that flare visually this is the first x flare coming out of sunspot group ar3848 Caused an R3 strong radio blackout. Central disc, directly Earth facing, also caused a 
a proton storm and a polar cap absorption event. Over to STO-131 angstroms, we can see how huge that 1.84 X flare really was. It actually created a huge coral hole above it that you can't see at 131 angstroms, but I will show you in just a bit. A little bit better version of HMI Intensigram shows you actually we have 3839, 3842, and 3844 all lined up here. You'll have to decide where this X 1.4 solar flare came from. I will show you the blast itself. Headed over to Lasco C3, you're seeing the first of the two X flares for the day. This is the X 1.84. You can see all the white particles. That is the proton storm that it created. We should have seen those on the really strong X flares that were Earth facing, the X9.15 and the X7.6, but they did not appear. And when I did inquire with Ness and Noah, they blocked, blocked me from asking them any more questions. But in fact, we do see what we're supposed to see here from a much smaller X flare, an X 1.84. This is Mercury here. This is T Atlas, the comet. It's supposed to be visible in the day sky currently. I'm not quite sure. This could be Venus coming through here. It's the only planet that actually orbits the sun in a clockwise clockwise rotation where all the other planets rotate counterclockwise. Jumping over real quickly to the planets today, the reason I say that could be Venus is it's right here and it's rotating clockwise while all the other planets, including Mercury, rotate counterclockwise. They say it was because of a collision early on in the solar system. This is a warning put out by NOAA. This is what occurred uh, from the first, first of the two X flares today, the X 1.84. There was the X 2 the day before, didn't bring us into space weather threshold with the protons. It's a proton storm here, i.e. we're under an S3 strong solar radiation storm that is in progress. So we have a proton storm that caused a radiation storm that caused a polar absorption event. We're also in a geomagnetic storm, and we've also just had another X flare. You can see this was caused by the X 1.8 solar flare, and they think that this event is likely to continue through the 10th and 11th of October, which is amazing because when we had an X 9.1 and an X 7.6 directly Earth-facing solar flare, we didn't have the protons move at all. We didn't have a polar absorption event. We didn't have a proton storm. We didn't have a solar storm, which is why I contacted NOAA and NASA and was, well, blocked. Headed over to GOES, Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. You can see the X flare right here. Again, we weren't sure if it was from 3842 or 3844. 3839 is there as well, but just has not been active like the other two have. This entire coronal hole, or this part of the coronal hole here, was all formed when the X flare went off yesterday here at 3848. All right, we're currently in a monster polar cap absorption event. Look at the radio alternation. Incredible. And this was just reinforced with the X 1.4 solar flare. Although it was on the departing limb, that's where our connection to the sun is. So the connection itself, which is called the Parker spiral connection, well, the energy can flow down that magnetic connection, which it looks like it probably has, and be geoeffective towards Earth. So that was probably the X flare right there, based on the timing. And we'll pull it forward. And I guess that was it. Not a real strong event, uh, but 
uh, obviously the X 1.84 event was much stronger or at least much more geo effective than the X 9.15 or the X 7.6. Again, laughable. Over to our Discover satellite. Let's start here at 10 o'clock. We had our G1 4.67 KP index geomagnetic storm start here at 3, 4, 5. It ended here at 6. No plasma or solar winds are present that would have caused a geomagnetic storm. Not even close. Talking about the maxing out at about 2 centimeters squared. Now, if we get into the next three hours, we have a couple of stragglers up here. One print at 33.43 that makes zero sense. Uh, what would have caused one minute of data that high? Nothing that I know of. It's like a data era to me. And then right back down to maximum of 3.3. I don't think you can call this a CME impact because, again, there was no CMEs or solar flares for that matter that would have arrived from from 10 to 1 last night central time or from 3 to 7 here UTC time as you can see doesn't even cross over 10 centimeters cubed so I just hate dealing with these space agencies especially considering they're huge budgets they can't seem to get anything right this all used to fit together like a puzzle and i believe it's being used to well keep the sheeple busy currently now we even have a space rock in play today or a near earth object at 701 central time last night we had a near miss from 2024 tk5 now they didn't see it, or at least they didn't report on it, until six or seven hours after it passed Earth. It was about 40 feet in diameter, and really was about uh, 90,000 miles out from Earth. So it wasn't too close of a shave, but closer to Earth than the moon, and it did pass in between Earth and the moon. Again, this was... 2024 TK5, and we'll look at their silly data. Taking a look at the solution data for 2024 TK5, they said they first spotted it on the 6th. They only had 24 observations. They didn't report it to the public till seven hours after it flew by. It was flying at about 10 kilometers per second, which is a very, very fast speed. And it was about 40 feet in diameter. Again, seen on the 6th, but not reported till 7 hours after the close shave or the flyby. And we look down here. Again, only 24 observations in two days and not reported until 7 hours after the flyby. Condition code 7, 0 being they know exactly where the rock's going, 9 being they have no idea, 7 being much, much closer to nine then zero obviously spotted by automatic uh, which is our ai software and i told you it was about ninety thousand miles from earth all right this is the x 1.84 solar flare it looks absolutely enormous compared to the x 9.1 or x 7.6 solar flares this is NASA's Goodard is with spiral, spiral or Parker spiral. And you can see how strong and large this CME is. And you can see that they're calling for a direct hit on Earth on around the 11th, which doesn't give us much time because it will be the 10th very shortly UTC time. So I updated all this and no one's really saying where that last X 1.4 solar flare came from. But I think we know by seeing ghost solar ultraviolet imagery of 195 angstroms, it came from 3842 or 3844. With that said, folks, we had a space rock fly by that they didn't tell us about. 
we're in a solar storm currently. We're in a proton storm. We have a polar cap absorption event, a very strong one going on. It's supposed to last through the 11th. Uh, we have a geomagnetic storm that hit with no plasma or solar winds from 10 to 1 last night, from 3 to 6 UTC time today. Uh, it's been a freak show all day. I hope you watched the entire video, because if so, you realize that they hit us with everything they have. A geomagnetic storm, a solar storm. Uh, it's just one thing after another, right? A radio R3 storm. One thing after another, they threw it all in today and even threw a space rock that they didn't report until seven hours after it's near flyby uh, into the pot just to make it boil. God bless. Please share it. Please subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.